Hi, my name is Tony Ruprecht, and I'm the former Minister for Multiculturalism. And I have an important announcement to make. We're here today to make an important announcement. We're going to raise this Kazakhstan flag on the 16th of December, exactly on the 30th anniversary of Kazakhstan. And we're doing this because we are really proud of what Kazakhstan has achieved in the last 30 years of the independence. It's really amazing the progress they've made. Not only attracting companies from all over the world, but attracting pharmaceutical technologies and medical technologies, building thousands of schools, and doing all of that so their citizens can not only get a good education, but the citizens then will be able to participate in this democratic system that Kazakhstan has established. We are, the whole world is looking to Kazakhstan and they're proud really of what Kazakhstan has accomplished. Not only within Kazakhstan, but also outside its borders and, very important, the respect that Kazakhstan has received in the international community. And that's why we want to raise this flag as well. Because remember, not only did they close up the, the nuclear testing site, one of the, the biggest ones in the world, but also the leadership Kazakhstan has provided for the purpose of stopping the, the, the testing of atomic or nuclear power. And so, uh, or secondly, the whole idea of uh, stopping nuclear proliferation among the world. And so we say, the reason why we raise this flag is because of the great accomplishments within the borders of Kazakhstan. Imagine Nur Sultan, a brand new city established on the steppes. And so this, there are so many items that I could list that Kazakhstan has accomplished in the last 30 years of their independence. So that's why we're raising this flag, but for one other additional reason. We do have some Kazakhstan citizens amongst our own citizens in Canada. And they too are good citizens who are making a tremendous contribution to our country in Canada. I invite you, I invite Canadians, I invite also people who come from Kazakhstan to participate in this flag raising ceremony right here at this parliament building on the 16th of December, 2021. I look forward to see you and welcome to our flag. Let me tell you that we did have an important meeting last Friday with the team that won a contest to go to Kazakhstan. And the contest was Kazakhstan through the eyes of the foreign media. And we won the first prize. And that's the reason why everyone's very happy. Our team is happy. And that's why we came together to really congratulate each other that we were able to be successful. Today, the United Communities of Canada is held in an award ceremony dedicated to the project Kazakhstan through the eyes of foreign medias. Most people do know that Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country in the world. It is the most dominant nation of Central Asia with the strongest performing economy. It is a democratic, secular constitutional republic with a diverse cultural heritage. Again, just like Canada. And that is why it is so important that our two nations come together, that our two nations can provide a history lesson to the rest of the world. The United Communities of Canada's video about Kazakhstan was appreciated and selected as one of the top five winners among 60 applicants from 36 countries. Tony Ruprecht, former Minister of Multiculturalism, and Inga Cherny Kellner, President of the United Communities of Canada, had a chance to visit Kazakhstan and get to know that country better. After they returned to Canada, they organized an award ceremony to appreciate all participants contributing to the victory. The meeting took place on the 24th of September 2021 in Veranda Cafe. The event was attended by several community leaders and media representatives. Everyone enjoyed themselves at the event in a pleasant and friendly atmosphere and promised to continue to further develop 
the strong relationship between the ethnic communities, including the Kazakhstan community and all other countries. During the meeting, Dr. Ruprecht announced the following statement. We must find a way to lessen the conflicts between warring parties or humanity will not survive. Good evening and I know that all of you know we're here on a for a grand enterprise. We're here to support what Kazakhstan stands for. Let me tell you, the leaders of Kazakhstan and Canada for that matter have come to a very incredible conclusion that if we continue this present course of individual and national non-cooperation and selfishness, we will be pushed toward the precipice and face extinction. Together, these two leaders concluded that in the 21st century, the biggest social skill that we can develop is to be comfortable with our ethnic diversity and with our ethnic minorities. In this century, that is a social skill we must all develop to avoid racial conflicts and ethnic and religious infighting. Certainly, if we continue on that path, world peace will only be an illusion. That's why it's important that we look at the Kazakhstan model for international peace. Kazakhstan first president coined the phrase unity and diversity. What do we say in Canada? We say something similar. We say diversity is our strength. And that is why our two countries have recognized that the way to world peace is to first accept our minorities. That concept finds its expression in a Kazakhstan organization developed for the purpose of creating world peace. The Nur Sultan Nazarbayev Center for Development of Interfaith and Intercivilizational Dialogue. This center brings together, on a yearly basis, all the international heads of traditional religions to overcome religious strife. It is a brilliant idea to resolve conflicts and to lessen religious radicalism. So my friends, you realize how important this is for international peace. What would happen, however, if we fail? What would happen if we don't succeed? As you know, right now we have issues, issues of climate change, issues with artificial intelligence, where the interface between human intelligence and artificial intelligence will be hard to separate in the future. Permit me to remind you that one lone madman can reduce all of civilization's achievements with one push of a nuclear button, and we would experience a nuclear winter and not be able to hand over our planet to the next generation, to our children. It is a beautiful planet. It is a blue planet. It's a wonderful, livable planet. And that's why we need to succeed and to continue to support this earnest construction dialogue that Nazarbayev Center has been able to establish. Both President Tokayev and Prime Minister Trudeau have expressed the urgently of this matter, that we must not fail the next generation. And therefore, you might, you, I might ask Canadians to take a stand in joining us in supporting this Kazakhstan model for international global peace. And now, I'm looking forward to make the presentations along with Inga, so that you shall be recognized for what you are doing within the Kazakh model of world peace. Many of us have recognized that Kazakhstan is the leading country to steer humanity away from catastrophe and toward peaceful coexistence. That model has a clear vision of how that can be done by developing the unique North Sultan Nazarbayev model with three achievable goals. One, 
reduce weapons of mass destruction. 2. Create an environment where conflicting parties can discuss their differences in an atmosphere of tolerance and respect. These conflicting parties are not only nation-states who threaten each other, but conflicts which arise due to religious, ethnocultural, racial and inter-civilizational tensions. 3. The proven success of this Kazakhstan model and how every nation, every organization should be encouraged to embrace this model, apply it and use it not only for their own internal stability, but as a roadmap leading to world peace. But the real reason behind our meeting was really to celebrate the success of the Kazakhstan model for international peace. It is really the success for the Nazarbayev Center for the development of interfaith and intercivilizational dialogue. And that's the reason I want to speak to you today, to introduce that model, not only to Canada, but also to the United Nations, because I think not every member of the United Nations would know about the Kazakh model. So my friends, first of all, the model shows us how we as human beings can develop the social skills so very essential in the 21st century in order to live in harmony with each other and what we can do to lessen the problems of racial injustice, the problems of ethnocultural prejudice and religious conflicts that lead to real radicalism and hate. The success of the Kazakh model is clear. It will mitigate these conflicting issues so that we can establish the first prerequisite to the peace and prosperity, treat each other with respect, with moderation, and with tolerance. That's why we believe all member states of the United Nations should embrace this model and should understand that this Kazakh model stands not only for harm reduction, but for peaceful coexistence. We believe it is going to be such importance that international institutions will not be able to carry on without it. And countries will recognize that this elusive goal of world peace cannot be attained without applying this Kazakhstan model. Our first aim should be, therefore, to introduce that model to every country, then to every city, and even every university and some high schools. This Kazakh model should have the same importance as the model of the United Nations, as presently practiced today at almost every university. With enough energy, we should try to open a local chapter of the Nazarbayev Center in every city in North America and include its core principles in every university curriculum. Yes, Kazakhstan deserves our gratitude in that it is willing to share this special model for international peace and stability with the rest of the world and certainly with our institutions in Canada. I want to thank you very much for listening and I hope that you will join us in this endeavor.